Hello everybody, in today's video we will be doing the chapter 10 of ACCA F1 Business and Technology Professional Ethics in Accounting and Business. So in this chapter we will be learning about the ethics which must be accepted and followed by the business organizations. Ethics are something which are like basic and they need to be followed for any business organization to succeed. This is a very theoretical chapter and we'll finish it. It's very easy. Okay. So what is business ethics? What are business ethics and what's their importance? Why do we need to follow business ethics? Ethics is a system of moral principles that examine the concept of right and wrong. Business ethics is the application of ethical values into the business behavior. Whether an action is considered to be right or wrong normally depends on the number of different factors, the consequences, the motivation behind the action, the guiding principles and the key values. So ethics are basically the moral values which we have, which we need to follow. So it is basically dependent on whether something is right to do or some, whether something is wrong to do. All that comes into ethics and the ethics when we put it into the business, they are called as the business ethics. Okay, so you discover that a colleague at work has been stealing from the company. What do you do? Do you report them to the management which might lead to their dismissal and the loss of a friend? Or do you keep quiet and risk being punished yourself if your knowledge of the situation later becomes clear? Do you urge the colleague to confess what they've done? Does it depend on the size of the theft, example $1 pad of paper or a $1000 piece of machinery? Does it depend on how friendly you are with the colleague? You can see that ethical problems, they require moral judgments. So that can be extremely difficult and it depends on many, many different factors. So that's how it is, right? It's very confusing. The study of business ethics is purely concerned with legal requirements. That is false because as I said again, business ethics are dependent on the right or wrong and the moral values which has nothing to do with the law right it is something which you need to do morally as a human being ethical dilemmas an ethical dilemma involves a situation where a decision maker has to decide what is the right or wrong thing to do examples of ethical dilemmas can be found throughout all aspects of business operations accounting issues so creative accounting to boost or suppress reported profits directors pay arrangements should directors continue to receive large pay packets even if the company is performing poorly should bribes be paid to facilitate contracts especially in countries where such payments are commonplace insider trading where for example directors may be tempted to buy shares in their company knowing that a favorable announcement about to be made should boost the share price so these are various dilemmas in the accounting issues now we have various production issues as well should the company produce certain products at all example guns pornography tobacco alcoholic drinks aimed at teenager should the company be concerned about the effects on the environment of its production process should the company test its products on animals we have various sales and marketing issues as well price fixing and anti-competitive behavior may overt and illegal or may be more subtle is it ethical to target advertising at children for like fast food or expensive toys at christmas should products be advertised by junk mail or spam mail Personal or human resource management issue. Employees should not be favored or discriminated against the basis of gender, race, religion, age, disability. The contract of employment must offer a fair balance of power because between employee and the employer. The workplace must be a safe and a healthy place to operate in. So these are the various ethical dilemmas which are faced by the business organizations every time. Like, and I, I, I repeat this again. Ethics are not legal. I mean, they're not written in any legal document, but it is something which you need to follow. The, there's no law. There's, the government never said that um, fast food chains you're not supposed to advertise. They can if they want to, but it has something to do with their own moral behavior, their own ethics, whether they really want to do this or no. Approaches to ethics. 
सो वट आर द अप्रोचेज टू एथिक्स मेकिंग एथिकल डिसीजन्स इज ऑफ्टन नॉट एन ईजी प्रोसेस इंडिविजुअल्स मे फाइंड दैमसेल्स फेसिंग एन एथिकल डिलेमा एंड कुड बी अनश्योर ऑफ द कॉन्टैक्ट एक्शन करेक्ट एक्शन दे नीड टू टेक सो देर आर सेवरल अप्रोचेज टू मेकिंग दीज डेसीजन्स सो एज बी हैव सीन इन द प्रीवियस इलास्ट्रेशन इट इज़ रियली डिफिकल्ट टू मेक अ डिसीजन इट्स इट्स अ डिलेमा इट्स वेरी कन्फ्यूजिंग सो वी हैव सम अप्रोचेज विच वी कैन टेक इन ऑर्डर टू मेक अ करेक्ट डिसीजन सो फर्स्ट वन इज कॉन्जिक्वेंशलिस्ट अप्रोच सो वट इज कॉन्जिक्वेंशलिस्ट अप्रोच सो दिस अप्रोच स्टेट्स दैट अ डिसीजन इज राइट और रॉन्ग डिपेंडिंग ऑन द कॉन्सिक्वेंस और आउटकम्स ऑफ दैट डिसीजन एज लॉन्ग एज द आउटकम इज राइट then the action itself is irrelevant so the consequentialist approach me says in its name itself that we just need to focus on the consequence of the action we are taking if the consequence we have or the if the outcome we have based on this action is right then we can do so but if the consequence is not a good consequence then we may not do so that's what it's saying for example if an individual needs to feed their family stealing may be seen as morally acceptable if there is no way of obtaining food this approach can be broken down into two further perspectives egoism and utilitarianism so what is egoism egoism is the action is morally correct as long as the outcome is favorable for the individual making the decision so egoism is just focusing on the individual who is taking the decision if it's right for them if the consequence is okay for them then it's a good or the correct decision to make what does utilitarianism state the action is considered to be morally correct if the outcome is favorable for the greatest number of people or the greater good so utilitarianism states that the consequence which happens it should be good for most of the people or many people as possible then it is known as morally acceptable or correct way for instance if an accountant is asked to cover up a major fraud within a company they work for an egoist approach to ethics may lead to accountant refusing to do so this would be because if the fraud is discovered at a later date the accountant risks serious penalties from a utilitarian point of view keeping quiet is also likely to be unacceptable why because the fraud may damage the returns to shareholders and could put the livelihoods livelihoods of the employees also at a risk as such reporting the fraud is likely to benefit a greater number of people right so what is conservatism sorry consequentialist uh, approach so consequentialist approach is basically based on what consequence happens when we take the decision there are two types which is egoism and utilitarianism egoism is just benefiting the person who is taking the decision utilitarianism is states that it should benefit most of the people right now we have pluralist approach so what is pluralist approach pluralist approach involves trying to cater to the needs of all stakeholders without seriously compromising the interests of any one group so pluralist approach states that we need to look at the um, needs of all the stakeholders but at the same time we don't have to compromise on any particular one small group or whatever for example a mining company may wish to may wish to open a new mine in order to access mineral deposit and earn its shareholders a large profit however local residents may be unhappy due to the pollution caused by the mine a pluralist approach would be to open the mine but ensure that enough money is spent to minimize the damage to the local environment so by doing this the stakeholder consisting of the local community is also happy because their safety and their needs are taken into control but at the same time we're not shutting down the mining process so the employees are also happy that they are also getting to do the work and earn money so this is what is known as a pluralist approach when the needs of all the stakeholders are taken into account so that was the um consequentialist versus pluralism now we have relativist versus absolutist so what is relativism relativism is the view that there is no universal moral code with which to judge all actions this means that whether something can be classed as ethical or not depends on the circumstances right 
वॉट एफ सम वन स्टोल अ ब्रेड टू फीड द स्टार्विंग फैमिली रिलेटिव में आग्यू द डिफरेंट पीपल विल व्यू द स्टेप डिफरेंटली सम मे फील दैट स्टीलिंग इज नेवर जस्टिफाइड वेल अदर्स विल फील दैट गिवन द सर्कमस्टांस इट वॉज अ रीजनेबल कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन सो रिलेटिविज्म ग्रेटेस्ट स्ट्रेंथ इज दैट इट एक्सेप्ट द डिफरेंट पीपल एंड कल्चर्स विल हैव डिफरेंट व्यूज इन वॉट इज राइट फॉर दैम एंड वॉट इज रॉन्ग फॉर दैम For organizations that operate internationally, this allows greater flexibilities when deciding on actions to take. This makes them more responsive to local attitudes. Unfortunately, relativism is often argued to be an excuse for organizations and individuals to do whatever they like and to continue with unethical activities. So, what is relativism saying? So, relativists say that every person views the problem in a different way. what might be right for you might not be right for me so it is clearly based on the situation you are in or the circumstance you are in now we come to absolutism so what is absolutism absolutism is an approach and it this approach to ethics argues that certain actions are inherently right or wrong regardless of the context or the circumstance that they occur in For example, an absolute would regard the taking of human life as entirely unacceptable, regardless of the context. Whether it was murder in self-defense would be irrelevant. The main strength of absolutism is that provides a framework of rules that are easy for individuals and companies to follow. However, it is often unclear where the absolutist should find this framework of ethical rules. should it be religious in nature or simply down to what they feel is universally accepted absolutism may also lead to problems where absolute rules conflict with one another for instance what if you had to steal something to save someone's life note that absolutism is linked to the idea of deontological ethics so what is deontological ethics this is linked to the work of german philosopher immanuel kant who suggested that when faced with an ethical dilemma an individual must look at the action being considered and deciding if it is inherently right or inherently wrong it ignores the consequences of the decision being made and it focuses on the individual meeting their moral duties so according to me absolutism is not a good way to go so what did absolutism say absolutism said that no matter the situation you are in no matter what the consequence is if it is wrong then it is wrong even if you are faced in a situation where you are getting kidnapped even if you had to kill the person for your own safety and self defense it is still wrong that is what is said in absolutism which is based on deontological ethics absolutism is based on deontological deontological ethics Imagine you are a company that runs a large chain of supermarkets. Expansion will create large number of local jobs and is expected to earn you significant profits. Local officials in country G have made it clear that in order to gain the appropriate planning permission, you will need to pay them money as inducements. This is a common practice for officials in country G, though it is illegal in your home country. What should you do? The answer depends on your approach. So what would an consequentialist say? Consequentialists would argue that your decision depends on the consequence of paying the bribes. If you were egoist looking at your own needs, you would probably pay the bribes as you would still stand to earn a significant profit from the venture. If you are a utilitarian company, then you may also consider paying the bribe because it would mean not only you but everybody will be earning the profits. what would pluralists say pluralists would look at ensuring that the needs of none of the stakeholders are seriously compromised by paying the bribe so while the payment will involve some loss to our stakeholders paying the bribe will still allow us to expand into country g which is like you know benefit them what did relativists say they would look into the context of the decision in this case bribery is commonly accepted parts of doing the business so we are looking at the situation so we can be flexible with our approach and consider paying the bribe now we come to absolutists 
प्लस में एब्सोल्यूटिस्ट सो वट इट एब्सोल्यूटिस्ट से दे वुड लुक एट वेदर पेइंग द ब्राइव वॉज फंडामेंटली और इनहेरेंटली इनकरेक्ट सो ब्राइवरी इज लीगल इन आर होम कंट्री सो एन एब्सोल्यूटिस्ट वुड देफो बी लाइकली टू कंक्लूड दैट पेइंग ब्राइब्स वुड बी इनअप्रोप्रिएट राइट I hope you understood. So, what are the theories and approaches which we've seen so far? Consequentialist approach versus pluralist approach. Consequentialist approach is based on the fact that we just think about the consequence, in which you go egoism and utilitarianism is there. Pluralist approach is means that we take the needs of all the stakeholders into consideration. Relativism versus absolutism. So, what is relativism? Relativism is based on the situation you are in, whether it is right or whether it is wrong. What about absolutism? If it is inherently wrong, which means it is wrong. Okay, Mia is a manager in company A. She has twenty employees who report to her, and she has been told that she needs to reduce this number by one. Mia decides that rather than making a member of staff redundant, she will instead reduce each employee's hours by one twentieth, thereby keeping everyone in job. So, what approach is she taking? So, we know that what Mia is doing is that she is basically tr- taking all the stakeholders into consideration, which means that she is a pluralist, right? The pluralist approach involves trying to find a solution that caters to all the needs of the stakeholders. So, that is what she is doing. She is like making sure that one person doesn't suffer, and everyone is happy. So, which is a pluralist approach? Why business ethics are important? So, businesses are part of society. Society expects its individuals to behave properly. and similarly expects companies to operate to certain standards so business ethics is important because there are certain expectations from the businesses so business ethics is important to both the organization as well as a whole and it is also important for the employees employers or anybody in you know on an individual level as well so how are business ethics important for the business organization So good ethics should be seen as a driver of profitability rather than a burden on business. An ethical framework is a part of good corporate governance and it suggests a well-run business. Investors are reassured about the company's approach to risk management. Investors are happy. Employees will be motivated in the knowledge that they operate in an environment of good ethical corporate behavior. And how does it benefit an individual? Consumer and employee expectations have evolved over the recent years. Consumers may choose to purchase ethical items even if they are not the you know cheapest. Employees will not blindly accept orders to act in a manner that they personally believe to be unethical. The fair trade mark is a label on consumer product that guarantees that disadvantaged product producers in the developing world are getting a fair deal. For example, the majority of coffee around the world is grown by small farmers who sell their produce through a local cooperative. Fair trade coffee guarantees to pay a price to producers that covers the cost of sustainable production and also an extra premium that is invested in local development projects. So consumers in the developed world may be willing to pay a premium price for fair trade products. because as a consumer i know that my money is going to help somebody and it is like fair and ethical i will pay more right adhering to ethical practice is always a cost to business is that true no it's not always a cost it is something due to which you can have increased profits in the future as well now we come to professional ethics so what is a profession a profession as opposed to other types of occupation is characterized by the following factors so what are the factors which are related to a profession the mastering of specialized skills during a period of training governance by a professional organization compliance with an ethical code acting in the public interest a process of certification being allowed to practice so for example we are studying for acca so you need a certification for acca right so it is a profession we need the certification and we should act 
in the interest of the public the public's interests must be met they should think that it is a fair way compliance with an ethical code we need to follow the certain ethics governance by a professional organization a professional organization must govern us and the specific skills must be mastered during the training there are many examples of professions such as accounting law medicine and teaching a professional accountant such as an acca member for example fulfills all of the above criteria in many countries including the uk it is also possible for unqualified people to call themselves accountants and set themselves up in a business however such people are not professional accountants as they do not belong to a professional accounting body and they have no obligation to follow an ethical code so since it is informal then they don't have the you know obligation to fulfill the ethical codes which is not a difference between a professional accountant and an unqualified accountant a professional accountant has passed exams which prove their level of knowledge true a professional accountant has a duty to stay up to date with his or her knowledge um is that true yeah that's true a professional accountant is required to comply with relevant legislation is that true yeah that's true as well let's just think about it a professional accountant must comply with an ethical code that's true so which of the following is not a difference between professional accountant and unqualified accountant so a professional account accountant is required to comply with relevant legislation so any accountant whether professional or otherwise would be expected to com- you know comply with the legislations so legislation is something which is basic to every single individual whether they are qualified or not qualified so this is not a difference like legislation is something which must be followed by everybody as mentioned above professions are distinguished in part by having a code of conduct that all members of that profession are required to follow this ensures that the profession as a whole does not have its reputation damaged by the questionable actions of some individual members so what are the professional codes of ethics both the international federation of accounts and the acca have developed codes of ethics for their members ifac which is the international federation of accounts code of ethics for professional accounts lays down ethical standards to be applied by practicing accountants across the world the ifac recognizes that some jurisdictions may have specific requirements and guidance that differ from its code in which case professional accountant should comply with the most stringent rules unless this is prohibited by the local laws or regulation note that the ifac code is now administered by the international ethics standards board for accountants iesba so the ifac code is now administered by the iesba which is ethics standards board for accountants international ethics standards board for accountants so the ifac code of ethics what are the fundamental principles integrity objectivity professional competence and due care confidentiality and professional behavior so now let's see them one by one a professional accountant must comply with the fundamental principles in the code at all times the ifac code is based on the conceptual framework approach to problem resolution rather than a rules based approach so professional account accountants are required to identify and address threats to complying with the fundamental principles rather than the code listing a long set of rules that aim to deal with every possible eventuality so the ifac also takes an interest in ensuring that the accounting profession in general and auditors in particular act in the public interest this means that accountants are expected to act in such a way to improve the general welfare of the society right rather than just acting in the best interests of their clients so the member bodies of ifac are professional bodies such as the acca so ifac has no direct ability to punish an accountant who acts contrary to the code however IFAC would expect the transgressor's professional body to investigate the matter and punish the accountant if necessary 
so the ifac cannot punish anybody if they're not following the principles so it can expect the transgressor to investigate the transgressor professional body to investigate and then they can punish them right so the acca's code of ethics and conduct is contained in the annual rule book issued by the association all registered students affiliates and members of the acca are required to comply to those ethics the acca code is based on the ifac code and takes a similar conceptual framework approach listing an identical set of fundamental principles that must be followed so acca code of ethics and conduct fundamental principles so what are they integrity objectivity professional competence and due care confidentiality and professional behavior so these are the code of ethics and conduct for acca these are the fundamental principles there are five of them so why what do the acca and ifac fundamental principles actually mean so the first one is confidentiality confidentiality is keeping the information safe and keeping it with yourself keeping it secretive like we cannot leak the data of others right so information obtained in a business relationship is not to be disclosed to third parties without specific authority being given to do so unless there is a legal prof or professional reason to do so this information should not be used for personal advantage of the accountant so this is the most basic thing that there should be confidentiality of the information so we cannot be sharing the information with the third parties unless there is a very very valid professional and a legal reason so we need to keep things confidential the second one is objectivity so accountants must ensure that their business or professional judgment is not compromised because of bias and conflict of interest so there it needs to be objective in nature which means what is right is right what is wrong is wrong we cannot be taking decisions based on bias or based on a conflict of interest it should be objective in nature integrity this implies fair dealing and truthfulness accountants should not be associated with any false misleading or recklessly provided statements so integrity just means that we need to be you know truthful and we need to be dealing with something in a fair manner and we should not be associated with something which is false or misleading right professional competence and due care so the accountants are required to have the necessary professional knowledge and skills which are required to carry the work for the clients and must follow all applicable technical and professional standards when carrying out that work so accountants are required to have some professional knowledge they need to have professional competence and they need to care the about and take care of the information so they need the skills which are required to carry out the work right next we have professional behavior so accountants must comply with all the relevant laws and regulations and they must avoid any actions that would bring the profession into disrepute so we need to obviously have a good respectable and a professional behavior and we must not harm the uh, reputation of our um body the standard body accounts body so these were the fundamental principles of acca confidentiality which is keeping the information safe objectivity which means taking decisions as it should be taken instead of it being affected by factors like you know um conflict or bias integrity which means which we need to be fair dealing and we need to be truthful professional competence and due care we need to be having the knowledge professional behavior we need to behave in a certain manner compliance with the fundamental principles so all the acca members must comply with the fundamental principles whether or not they are in practice members must identify threats in compliance with the principles and apply safeguards to eliminate the threat or reduce it to an acceptable level such that compliance with the fundamental principles is not compromised students affiliates and members of the acca who are in doubt as their correct course of action in specific ethical dilemmas should contact the acca for guidance 
those failing to observe the standards expected of them may be called before the accs disciplinary committee and they are required to explain their conduct so these are the ways in which acca looks after how people are complying to the laws and fundamental principles which we've studied above moving on we have the illustration ifac and acca code of ethics so acca disciplinary committee decision the acca code of ethics and conduct is binding on all its members and students in 2020 a student taking her corporate and business law computer based exam was alleged to be using or be in a profession of a device capable of taking photos which she had on her desk her conduct was found to be dishonest in that she gained an unfair advantage for herself in the exam she also failed to cooperate fully with the investigation so the disciplinary committee found the student to be guilty of misconduct and ordered she to be removed from acca student register and to pay costs this with sums about 750 euros so this is how the disciplinary committee takes the decisions right thomas works in the accounts department of a large multinational company if profits for the company are above a certain level thomas will receive a large bonus because of this he decides to manipulate some of their expenses artificially increasing the profits and allowing him to get the bonus so what is this what is the um fundamental principle which thomas has not followed obviously it is a which is confidentiality why because there is no evidence that thomas has breached the confidentiality in this scenario right so he wait let us find the answer first let us discuss everything all the four points there is no evidence that thomas has breached confidentiality in this scenario however he has produced an inaccurate profit figure compromising his integrity he is also breaching objectivity as he is allowing self interest to bring bias into his work his actions if discovered would also bring the profession into disrepute meaning that he is not displaying professional behavior so which of the fundamental principles has thomas not breached read the question carefully even i myself did not read it correctly which is not so confidentiality professional okay professional behavior he has breached integrity also he has breached objectivity also he has breached confidentiality there is nothing mentioned in the question which states that he has sold the data to somebody or anything like that so the answer is a which is confidentiality moving on the role of accountant in promoting ethical behavior the role of accountant in promoting ethical behavior so what are the things which the accountant has to do in order to promote the ethical behavior so at many business meetings or on many board of directors it is only the professional accountant who belongs to a profession and therefore has a duty to act in the public interest right so what is public interest public interest refers to the common well being of ge- or general welfare of the society professional accountants must consider this as they have a wider duty to act in the best interests of the public at a large as well as the business and its owners the professional accountant therefore has a special role in promoting ethical behavior through out the business we need to act in a certain manner we need to make sure that the public interest is met and we are not you know kind of destroying that now we have what corporate codes of ethics is corporate codes of ethics most company especially if they are large have approached the concept of business ethics by creating a set of internal policies and instructing employees to follow them these policies can either be broad generalization a corporate ethics statement or can contain specific rules a corporate ethics code so a corporate statement a corporate ethics statement is something which is very generalized in on a broader note but then a corporate ethics code is something which is more focused and which is you know more um like it contains specific rules so there is no standard list of content 
it will vary between different organizations typically however it may contain guidelines on issues such as honesty integrity and customer focus many organizations appoint ethics officers also known as compliance officers to monitor the application of the policies and to be available to discuss ethical dilemmas with employees when needed so the purposes of code of conduct so why do we need to have codes of conduct in general so some commentators see the growth in codes of conduct as a cynical attempt by companies to escape legal liability when an employee is caught doing something wrong so the company can try to claim that it is not the company's fault when a rogue employee acts outside the stated rules other commentators argue that the codes of conduct are simply a marketing tool that companies can use to highlight to public how well they behave in practice a code of conduct will look only work if the management are seen to support it for example by holding regular seminars at the business to promote ethical practice so the worst situation is where a code of conduct exists but the management openly derides it conducts and instructs the employees to like you know not follow it so if the business itself does not support it then there's no value for the codes right now we have another illustration codes of ethics and codes of conduct so what are what is this so let's read tesco plc giving you a minute read it yourself and then we'll discuss okay so tesco states that it is committed to conducting its business in an ethical manner treating employees customers suppliers and shareholders in a fair and honest manner and ensuring that there are constant and open channels of communication tesco has a code of ethics for its employees including a policy on the receipt of gifts and a grievance procedure to cover employment issues employees are able to ring a confidential telephone helpline to raise concerns about any failure to comply with legal obligation health and safety issues damage to the environment etc business code of ethics are all the obligations in a company's code of ethics imposed on the employee or does the company also take obligations to behave ethically are all the obligations in a company's code of ethics imposed on the employee or does the company also take on obligations to behave ethically so see the obligations in a company's code of ethics flow in both directions the employees must also uh, behave ethically but the company must also behave ethically right moving on we come to ethical threats and dilemmas so what are the ethical threats and what are the dilemmas so there are several key threats to ethical behavior and um, the accountants they try to um one second yeah so there are several key threats to ethical behavior and the accountant should attempt to avoid so what are the threats the first threat is self interest threat so this could occur where a financial or other interest influences an accountant's judgment and causes a conflict of interest for example by overstating the profits of a company they work in an accountant may receive higher pay or bonuses so when the individual accountant's interest outweighs the company's goals then that is some it's a threat it is known as a self interest threat next we have self review threat so this may occur when an accountant is required to reevaluate their own previous judgment for instance if an accountant was asked to review and justify a business decision they made it would be difficult for them to remain objective right so the next one is the self review threat so when a person or an accountant is said to review his past decisions that can create threats as well right advocacy so advocacy can be a problem if an accountant in is promoting a position or opinion to the point where their subsequent objectivity is compromised 
this could occur when acting for a client when in litigation or disputes with third parties so advocacy is when an accountant is promoting a position or opinion to this point that the objectivity is compromised so when dealing with litigations and when dealing with third parties such a situation occurs right next is familiarity threat so familiarity threat can occur when an accountant becomes sympathetic to the interests of others due to a close personal relationship so just because you are familiar to a person and you that's why you're changing your decisions and making it in such a way that it benefits you know because you know that person so that is what is known as familiarity threat this can seriously compromise professional judgment this could occur if acting for clients over a long period or when accepting gifts or preferential th- treatment from clients intimidation threat intimidation threat occurs when an accountant is deterred from acting objectively by actual or perceived threats so this could be for example if an accountant is threatened with dismissal over a disagreement of application of an accounting principle so intimidation threat is when an accountant is deterred from acting objectively by actual or perceived threats so if someone does not want to comply even when you have a perceived threat that is known as an intimidation threat so what are the threats we saw self interest threat when we are fo- we as an accountant are focusing on our interest rather than the company or the organization's interest self review threat is when we are supposed to review the past decision we have taken advocacy when dealing with third parties and when we want to prove our point to such a level that the objectivity gets compromised familiarity threat just because we know a person we know a client so based on that we take biased decisions intimidation threat this occurs when we do not act a certain way even though we know what the threats are what are the safeguards against ethical threats professional bodies so how do the organizations safeguard themselves from such threats in response to the ethical threats outlined above the acc along with the other professional bodies have put in place several safeguards to try to reduce or eliminate such threats so what are they ethics training for all professional accountants both as part of their initial training on an ongoing basis creation of corporate governance requirements professional or regulatory monitoring and disciplinary procedures setting of professional standards so by training them by creating corporate governance by professional or regulatory monitoring and by setting professional standards so these are the certain things by following these then we can be having you know uh we can safeguard the threats so now we come to safeguards against ethical threats on a business perspective perception so organizations can also help to reduce the threat of ethical breaches by the employee uh by their employee by amongst other things having an effective internal complaints procedure so that which enables the reporting of unprofessional and unethical behavior so they can also create a culture that makes it easy as possible for the employees to follow their professional codes and behave ethically so there are six values which must be followed there are six values that can apply in order to accomplish this so these can be easily remembered by using the acronym hotter so hotter what are the safe so how do you safeguard against the ethical business the first one is honesty employees should be encouraged to be honest at all times even when this may be seen as detrimental to the organization itself for example a sales person should never overstate the benefits or features of the product they are selling so employees must be encouraged to be honest openness this means that the organization should be willing to freely provide information as needed to the stakeholders so what we need to keep our records open if somebody wants to know something we can show them we need to be confident about it right 
we need to show them whatever the stakeholders whatever they need we can openly provide the information this should make it easier for shareholders to decide whether to invest in the business or not transparency so what is transparency transparency is similar right transparency this is similar to openness but then we need to keep our records transparent there's a difference between openness and transparency transparent means that we need to make it easier for the stakeholders to review the activities this can be helped by regular audits and the production of detailed reports right trust organizations need to be trustworthy in their dealings with others and attempt to work in the best interests of as many stakeholders as possible this could involve not overcharging customers empowerment this involves giving employees and other stakeholders more ability to take their own decisions this will improve their own motivation and self image so we need to give them the ability to make their own decisions respect all employees and stakeholders should be treated with dignity by the organization regardless of their age gender ethnicity religion or sexuality so we need to treat everyone with respect only right so those were how we can safeguard the business ethics hotter honesty openness transparency trust empowerment and respect if these principles are a part of organizational values it will foster an ethical culture which will make breaches of the ifac and acca far less likely so test your understanding 7 Sophia is an accountant at a company a small manufacturing company last year Sophia estimated that the launch of a new product the GJH would boost a company's profits the board of a company is currently reviewing the performance of GJH and have asked Sophia to review the launch of the GJH and evaluate whether it was a success so what is this she had to review the decision she took right so this would be C which is self review dealing with unethical or illegal conduct if an accountant uncovers unethical or illegal conduct within an organization they work for there is a series of steps that they should take to deal with the issue the accountant should first consult with whoever is responsible for governance or ethics within the organization this may be a compliance officer or the board of directors themselves if the problem remains unresolved the accountant should take legal advice or advice from the professional body like the acca if the situation still cannot be resolved the accountant should consider reporting to the relevant authorities if there is a legal or professional obligation to do so and withdrawing from the engagement so the first step is we need to talk to whoever is in the company whoever is responsible like the compliance officer if not that then we can go to the acca if not that after that i mean not if not after that we need to take any legal actions if required nina works for a retail company based in country h she has recently uncovered that her employer is buying in goods from countries with poor labor conditions even though they have assured their consumers that all their goods are ethically sourced this is not illegal in country h though they would likely be significant backlash against the retailer's product if this information were uncovered by the public which of the following statements is correct as there are no legal implications of the retailer company's actions nina should take no action nina should immediately report this to her professional body nina should approach the board of directors and discuss the issue nina should report to ethical breach to the public and press this would be in public interest so as we have seen the first issue was that we need to talk to the compliance officer or the board of directors after that we go to the professional body and then we go to the legal or the public body so the first step is the board of directors ethical issues are rarely clear cut in the real world they may not be one correct approach to take 
Okay. Uh, AB is a large airline. A recent survey of its passengers indicated that 65% had problems due to other passengers allowing their pre- uh, children to create noise and disturbance on the aircraft. Families make around 15% of AB's total passengers. Which of the following courses of action would be regarded as utilitarian point of view? Do nothing as families' rights should be protected. Refuse to allow bookings for families. Provide entertainment for children to keep them occupied. Create a separate sections on plane with the family and children. Okay, so what would a utilitarian do? Utilitarian believe that an action is morally correct if it benefits the greatest number of people. The Okay, so that's what utilitarian says. So obviously B, why did I take the answer as B? C, don't get confused between utilitarian and pluralist approach. Utilitarian, um, see, egoism was where the person takes a decision based on his individual interest. Utilitarian takes something which benefits most of the people. So, 65% people had the problem, only 50% were families. So, we would refuse the bookings for the families. Consider the following two statements. Your supervisor at work instructs you to undertake an activity you believe to be illegal. This is an example of ethical dilemma. Adopting a strong ethical code will tend to improve a company's relationship with with investors, which is correct. So the answer C, both of them are correct. Which of the following will be required before an occupation can be classified as a profession? So more than given more than a given number of individuals must be in this occupation. Um, the occupation must be governed by a professional organization. Legal or political approval is needed. All members must be of a certain age. The organ the answer is B obviously. Harry is an accountant in a large business. The finance director has asked him to lie to the other directors about the profitability of the company. Which fundamental ethical principle would Larry be breaching if he agreed to this? So by doing that, what is Harry breaching? Harry is not following integrity because he's not being integral and he's lying. So that comes under integrity, right? Objectivity was biased, confidentiality was leaking the uh, things to a third party, professional confidence was having knowledge. So answer is C, integrity. Consider the following statements. An auditor should not report unsafe or fraudulent activity within a client organization as this would breach the fundamental principle of confidentiality. Acting in the public interest refers to an accountant's duty to consider the general welfare of the society of his and her so obviously one is not true only b is true a professional accountant is working in a south american country that has its own code of ethics for accountants which is not as strict as created by ifac which of the following statement is correct the accountant must comply with the ifac code as it is stricter we must always follow those codes which are more stringent right jack is an accountant who is currently helping to defend one of its clients who is currently being prosecuted by the local government because of tax evasion so what is jack doing jack is uh, what is jack exposed to so see we could have said that it is familiarity but familiarity deals with something which has a friend so but then if something is related it has gone to a third party where court is involved so we are proving a point to a level that the objectivity gets lost so that is known as advocacy see if he would have taken bribes if he would have taken gifts from his client or if the client was his friend it would be familiarity but advocacy is when the third party is involved and we tend to help them the following are all qualities that you may see in a professional at work Write down four of them that contain fundamental principles of ethical behavior. So that was hotter, honesty, yeah, so it would be, what, are you sure that it's honesty? First answer me that. 
ऑनेस्टी व समथिंग टू डील विथ द सेफ गार्डिंग ऑफ द एथिकल इन्फॉर्मेशन वॉट वी द क्वेश्चन इज द फॉलोइंग और ऑल क्वालिटीज दैट यू मे सी इन अ प्रोफेशनल एट वर्क वी नीड टू राइट फोर ऑप्शन दैट कंटेन फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ एथिकल बिहेवियर फ्रॉम आई एफ ए सी एंड कोड्स ऑफ एथिक्स सो वी नीड इट टू बी ऑब्जेक्टिव राइट वी नीड कॉन्फिडेंशलिटी वी नीड इंटेग्रिटी एंड वी नीड प्रोफेशनल बिहेवियर सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट इज रिटर्न इन द आई एफ ए जी कोड ऑफ एथिक्स सो इट इज ई डी ई जी द फॉलोइंग आर द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ एथिकल थ्रेट्स द फॉलोइंग सेंटेंसेज कंटेन गैप्स डैश टेंस टू अकर वन एन अकाउंटेंट इज प्रोमोटिंग अ पोजिशन और ओपिनियन टू अ पॉइंट दैट देर सब्जेक्ट सब्सिक्वेंट ऑब्जेक्टिविटीज बींग कॉम्प्रोमाइज सो दैट इज सी एडवोकेसी लाइक वी हैव सीन दैट टू दैट एक्सटेंट दैट इट इज कॉम्प्रोमाइज इट इज सी इफ एन अकाउंटेंट हैड टू ऑडिट द फाइनेंशियल रिजल्ट ऑफ अ कंपनी दैट इज ओन्ड एंड रन बाई वन ऑफ देयर फ्रेंड्स दैट वुड बी डी फेमिलियरिटी why because it is run by their friends that's it we're done with this chapter i hope you understood this chapter i get it that it can get a bit boring since it's a theoretical chapter the playlist link is given in the description box below make sure that you watch the previous videos and the further upcoming videos as well thank you